Okay, now that we understand how to use cell setup and a little bit about RoboCell, <clears throat> and we saved our positions, let's go ahead and create our first program for pick and place. Remember that we are simply doing this. Coming down to 11, 1, pick out the block, move it back to 11, over to 12, set the block down, open the gripper, back to 12, back to 99. So I have some something done already. I'm just going to delete it. Just like uh, normal Windows functions, we can just delete and I'll get rid of it. I can do this and click here, hold my shift and click, select it all, delete it all. I can pick one at a time and delete it. For right now, just deleting it all and starting over. <clears throat> okay, like anything, you're going to be able to need to think in uh, common sense terms. But right now, if I were to send this to my object with the gripper closed, it's going to smash into my block and possibly damage either the block or the machine. So I want to open the gripper. That'll be the first thing I want to make sure I do. Open the gripper. Now I'm going to move to position 11, which is my above pick point for one. So right here, go to a position. I can go to the position by joint. I can go linear. I can go circular. Circular uh, will cover in a different lesson, which means it has to pass through another point in a circular motion, and the mathematics of it needs to work out or else it won't run. But my target position is now you might not have these in here right away I've used them all so now they're in here you'll probably end up with nothing to begin with so I'm just going to type in 11 and remember I can view my positions if I go up to close out this quick if I go to options sorry view positions and I look here I want to look at the Z for my 2 and 1. So here's Z. Now if I wanted to make this match, let's see here, I'll say position 2. Now I guess I can't change it like I thought I could, or as easily as I thought I could anyway. So, regardless, this is just showing actually it's okay to have a simulation, but there's a difference here in my Z. And uh, I might actually be dropping the block from a little bit of a distance to the top of my table. So, for now, I'm just going to close out of this and come back to my programming. So, we're going to be sending this to position 11 first. I'm going to do it in a straight line because usually it's the fastest way to get there. Now definitely if you're going to be picking up an object, you're coming into contact near an object, slow your speed down. But for now I know I'm just moving above my object so I'm just going to say fast which is basically rapid. Say OK. So we're going to go to position linear fast. Okay, now I want to go to position one. Position one and say linear and I'm going to slow my speed down to three. Okay, well now I'm at my pick position or at pick position. In 11 I was above pick. So I need to close my gripper. So now I'm picking it up. I'm going to return to position 11 linear I'm just going to go ahead and do this at the speed of 5 there's one other way we can do this in duration in other words if you want it to take you only a certain amount of time and this is in one tenths of a second so if I wanted it to take uh, 50 tenths of a second or 500 tenths of a second I could put 
50 in here and it would take that long. For now I'm just going to leave the speed and say okay so it's picked up we're above pick position one now I'm going to go to above pick position two which was 12 we programmed that earlier right there so move to position 12 we're going to do that fast now since we're going to get coming in contact with the table at position 2 or you can just type it in 2 linear I'm going to slow it down again 3 just in case something would be off a little bit I don't want to break anything Every, you know these robots are about uh, between 16 and 19 thousand dollars so being a little safe is good say ok now we're going to open our gripper and let the block go. We're going to go back to position 12. And I'm going to leave the linear. Okay. And then finally, back to our home position, which was position 99. Okay. So with any luck, now I should be able to run this. There's options for running it. You can run single line at a time. You can run the cycle which is all the way through and you can continuously loop it so it's going to do this and do that and do that again which is the reason also why if you're going to loop something to have a safety built in like the open gripper function at the beginning of your program make sure that your robot is sitting in a state before you begin the program that is safe for the operator and the machinery involved so when trying new programs good to go with the single line so we ran and opened the gripper it's going to go to position 11 which was above pick to position 1 and close the gripper Back to above pick, over to above pick point two, down, and open the gripper. You can see it dropped it a little ways. Now, go back to position 12, and now it's safe to send that object home. So let's suppose I want to run that again. Or I didn't make sure that my cell was in the correct position. What would happen if something were out of place? Let's just run this whole cycle clear through once. smash right into that block isn't it well it's because we needed to reset our cell and now we're sure because the program begins with the open gripper that we're okay so this concludes the first lesson of the robots 3.1.2 make sure you read the directions and answer the questions and turn it in to the unit 3.1 and there will be a drop box created for this activity
So one more thing I needed to add was that how do you create a, a command or a remark? Well, if I want to change something from a command to a remark, I can just come here and change it to that. And now with this little asterisk by it, it means it's a remark, no longer a command. So if I was running through this program and it found this, it would just ignore it. So this way you can label things in your program. So if I go up here and I could just say, well, what I've already done here. Double click that, I just typed in go to position, whatever. And then I can change it to a remark so that when it gets to this point, it just simply ignores it because the asterisk is by it. So that's how you create the command and remark in your program. Mm-hmm.